very gummy donut. Yeah, that was, that was just the elements, not the compounds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, where do I go from here? Ah. Okay, uh, topic is rain gardens. Uh, I'm going to uh, begin by defining a little bit for a lot, a lot of people are not quite sure exactly what they are, so I'm going to spend just a little bit of time on that and then move into some of the organizational help that's available to make them happen. Uh, rain gardens as we see them are just gardens, but they actually are highly functional for the purpose of improving water quality and even the EPA recognizes this. You wouldn't think they would ever get to that level, but they have. And they say uh, a good site drainage that uh, treats water as a resource rather than a uh, toxic material, a waste. So this is what uh, a typical residential rain garden would look like. Uh, it's simply uh, the shown here is an herbaceous garden, but it could include shrubs and trees as well. And uh, unlike a raised garden, which, were, which I most commonly see throughout town, these are actually uh, nestled. I, usually, I don't like to use the word submerged because that's not, that's, overextending it's there's they're nestled into the ground so that they can capture water and hold it so it can be dissipated either into the plant structure itself or or into the ground and as Harry just covered it takes the slow scenic route to the river which is what we all want and uh, the water that's collected here can come from almost any source a typical one is a house roof which is extremely impervious but uh, not far behind that is your lawn and uh, and the driveway, porch, patio, you name it, anything uh, uh, <clears throat> that you can collect is of great benefit to the environment. Uh, rather than in the street drain, as was pointed out, because this takes the express route right to the river within minutes. The job of a rain garden plant uh, this was published by the Minnesota Nat Resources. Uh, you can see there, those are some pretty healthy root systems and they come to us by nature. These are native uh, Michigan plants that have been here for thousands of years and they develop, they're very hardy, they have deep roots and they provide a natural path for water to find its way into the ground. And within that system also, uh, during the non-dormant season is a, they call it, the hydrologists call it a media filter. It's, uh, that's where your pollution control comes from. Above ground, uh, they're quite attractive. Uh, there's a, the, the, the number of plants is practically endless. You can create any appearance that you, that you may like. Some people have different tastes in that regard. Uh, but uh, the above ground is mainly a, a good uh, source of uh, pollinators if you enjoy seeing those around. And uh, I also want to mention the thousands upon thousands of beneficial insects that live in here that also support the uh, bird population. <clears throat> Maintenance. Uh, a downspout is about all you need. No fertilizers, chemicals, or anything else. Uh, this is a typical setup where uh, the rain garden is placed so it can intercept the flow from the downspout to the adjacent driveway and hence into the uh, street uh, drain. Uh, a lot of people complain about wet spots. Um, turf is not a good absorber of water. I don't know if you've observed that in your own lawn. So this is, uh, some cases uh, needs some serious work, but a lot of them simply need correct planting. They don't need a lot of expensive uh, overhaul or landscaping. Uh, here's a case where uh, the owner has uh, run the downspout exten uh, extensions uh, underground to a pop-up valve and into the lawn, and of course the turf grass can't handle that. So the solution there was, voila, a rain garden. And this is a, you can tell by the plants, this is a, obviously in the first year. Water in the basement, this is a case where uh, the landscaping was improperly done and the water drained toward the foundation wall and went you know where. 
And uh, this was solved by creating a new low spot, re-excavating to make the land slope up toward the foundation wall, and then placing a rain garden to take care of the water that was uh, normally go there. <clears throat> if you're lucky enough to be an Ann Arbor resident, uh, the city of Ann Arbor will give you a credit for a rain garden that you put together. And I have these cards on the table back there. If you pick one of these up, it'll tell you how to uh, negotiate that. Uh, Harry and uh, Evan both uh, spoke of this. And th these are the kinds of things that are in your yard that uh, generate chemicals, fluids, sediments, uh, uh, sediments and debris are by themselves not too bad, but they seem to attract pollutants that adhere to them. Uh, and of course, animal waste is becoming uh, an even larger problem in our river uh, because of the uh, E. coli resulting from that. So it all ends up in the storm sewer and uh, goes into the Huron. That's not a very pretty picture. So what we like to do is encourage people to become water detectives in their yard, grab some kids, either your own or some others, and uh, take them out there and see if you can figure out during a storm if it's safe or shortly after the storm and uh, find out if you have a problem. Where's the water going? And uh, if you do and you think you need some help, who are you going to call? Stormwater busters. <clears throat> and Washington County provides uh, three very excellent uh, resources. Again, uh, look at this card that I provided on the table. Uh, they'll give you design assistance. They'll help you locate and design uh, a garden. All you have to do is provide the shovel and, uh, and the dig power. Uh, they'll, if you're unable to dig it, they'll give you a list of uh, people who are able to do that for you. There's a Master Rain Gardener program of uh, which I participated in, and uh, that trains people, citizens, volunteers, anybody uh, to design and build their own. And then if you don't want to do any of that, you can go online to their site, and they have just about everything you can name step by step, where to get plants, how to shovel, how to, you know, you name it, it's on there. And uh, so that's very useful. And uh, if you're in the Master Rain Gardener program, which I advocate very strongly, uh, and that's also on this little handy card. Boy, a lot on this <laughs> small little card. <clears throat> uh, your garden can appear here on the Hall of Fame. And uh, if you want to, uh, if you're really thinking about this or you know somebody who is, it starts February 27th, and it's at the uh, Water Resources Office on Zebro. And if you are lucky enough to live on Miller or Madison where they have street-side rain gardens, you get a break on the, uh, on the fee. And there's also a, a scholarship uh, uh, available for that as well. And this is Washtenaw County. This is our latest map of all the rain gardens. Forget about the colors. They're each a rain garden. <clears throat> and we recently found out that this number is going to increase substantially. Some, some Ann Arbor gardens uh, snuck under the radar. So I hope you'll consider it. Thank you. <laughs>